We understand an upside down world, but they're writing us off before we get to the starting line. A stalled generation? Who do you think is gonna fix all this? We will, because our future is the future. The next greatest generation is now. We all start somewhere. We start with the day. We start with him. We start with family. We start with a lesson. And the perfect wave. We start here and here. We start at your office and your home. We start with the connections that matter the most. The ones that move us, change us, inspire us. In an ever-expanding world, personal connections are what tie everything together, what ties us together. We all start somewhere. At GTA, we start with you. Shadow Gaming. I'm actually solo today. So, welcome again to the University of Guam Trident Esports' week three of the NACE Star League with Counter Strike Global Offensive. We are going up against the Grand Canyon University White Teams Esports, and it's going to be pretty good. I mean, you know, CSGO uh, stats so far for the, the Tritons hasn't been too too good, but you know, we're still growing. It is week three, so it's still early in the season. So hopefully we're going to see some progress in terms of the players, you know, trying to melt together, trying to build their teamwork. Uh, Coach Darren Ujoa, who would be commentating with me uh, in and out, is uh, trying his best to form this team into such a more competent uh, force in this NACE Star League. But we're currently in group stage uh, of week three. Uh, we did go 16-2 and 16-0 in the first first week. And then we kind of got washed in the second week. But, you know, we had content. If you check it out on our Instagram at UOG Triton Esports, you can check out how, um, you know, the, the, the expectations and the reality of week two. But hopefully week three does improve. So... Uh, I don't think we're going to get into it just yet. We're waiting to be connected into the server uh, as a spectator. If you guys don't know how CSGO works, it is a boomer game. So you have to go into console to connect as a spectator, specifically for these NACE Star League servers. Now, um, in terms of CSGO versus, you know, you guys watch Valorant all the time, is that uh, CSGO... Everyone has sort of the same utility. Everyone can have sort of the same skill set and everyone can have the same guns, right? Um, obviously. But in difference of having everyone have the same utility, the everyone having the same smokes, everyone having the same Mol Molotov cocktails or, or incendiary grenades, and, you know, generally speaking, uh, having that sort of utility across the board allows for much different dynamics when it comes to execution onto the site. Now the opponent team is new, and they are. Uh, will be interest. It'll be interesting. Uh, I did see their stats in the open stage for Nace Star League, where they did also get defeated pretty handily against other teams. So it'll be interesting to see how they are going to be uh, playing, because apparently both of these teams are new in terms of their team composition. But like I said, the dynamics of CS:GO are much different in Valorant, where everyone has sort of the same tool set. So it really comes down to execution and teamwork on that execution, right? Everyone has to know their smoke lineups. Everyone has to know their uh, their molly lineups for post plant. Everyone needs to know their their fl god flashes, uh, depending on the map, right? If it's in Mirage, you have to know god flash and A. If it's uh, Nuke, you have to know molly and mollies that go from from T spawn into a site hut, which is insane, right? So <clears throat> looks like Whirly has given us the IP and that is already inclusive. Oh, that's very interesting too, is that the IP address has a little port that you add on to it and the players play on, you know, like what, 270.15, right? Spectators have to go to 270.
which is really weird. It's really weird, but you know that's just how CS:GO is because it's a it's a very old game. It's back in twenty. It was released in twenty fifteen, and this is actually the third version of of Counter Strike. Of course, it was CS one point six, and then my game was fun. You know, I just played it for fun, and now there's CS:GO, which is you know the quote unquote new game, but is in fact not new. It's 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 a boomer. It's a boomer game. It's boomer as hell. So it looks like we're going straight into it, and it looks like it's gonna be Mirage. Oh God. Okay. <clears throat> as production takes off that um, scoreboard, we're gonna see that. Wait, what? How come? How <laughs> see? How come they're spawned next to each other? Anyway. It's gonna be fun. Uh, looks like they're already choosing the side, and and you're seeing uh, the Tritons picking uh, CT most likely. Actually, I think depending on how the the rule set works, um, they most likely have to play a knife round to determine who becomes CT or T, or they're just gonna play straight into it. Now it's it's a five v five game where we person we have. You know what's crazy? Is that I know Aladine, I know Ty, I know Termulo. I think Chotomate is is um is Phil. And um I think we're missing okay, Jakey's there. You know, it's it's crazy to know, it's crazy to see their names in CSGO do not do not match their their actual in-game names. So it is what it is. And it looks like we are going to be having CT versus T. Oh, no. It's going to be a knife. It's going to be... So it is face it rules. They're using face it servers. And because of that, you have to do a knife round in order to determine who is going to be on the attacking side or the defending side. Now, specifically speaking, uh, you kind of always want to be on the attacking side first, especially in a game like um, uh, a map like Mirage. In in general, you want to be an attacking because that's l generally the harder, um, the harder side to be on when it comes to either even even Valorant, uh, Valorant or CS:GO. Just because you want to get all of these rounds out of the way and defending is much easier because you're not inclined to play as much teamwork as it would be in in T side or, or an attacking side. Because attacking side, you need to learn your execution, like I mentioned earlier. Your execution onto site, you have to throw the, the nades all in the right spots, all the right split, uh, timings. And it looks like, yep. And it looks like um, Grand Canyon University is going to opt for the T side with uh, status snipes playing that P2, P250, most likely going to be the entry fragger with his powerful gun on site. And they're going to be playing some grenades there. They have a smoke and a grenade uh, HE on the side of uh, GCU, but we're seeing Termulo moving his way into CT, or rather B site with a with a decoy grenade. Interesting, because he has a silenced pistol. And you're having Chotomate using production. Who is Chotomate? Anyway, <laughs> Termulo. Oh, Tiny and Termulo actually getting the first kill, first blood there. And it looks like they're trying to get some apps control, but there is not, not a spy taking down Termulo. And there's the trade taking putting down someone and getting that market control to take the uh, retake going but oh there it is it does get not a spy as well and it's a 2v3 situation and you're seeing one already making their way into short on the uog triton side putting pressure into bench but there is still one more in apps and then the last one is on bench it is a 1v1 situation tie name the last one alive he can still get this p250 uh, this usp kill and he does and does he have enough time I don't think he has enough time. He does not have enough time. He's going to go for a gun. Unfortunate. He wins the pistol duel, but he doesn't get anything off of it. And it looks like GCU is going to take first game. But there's going to be a lot of money in the bank when it comes to all the kills that they're doing. So Q is, in fact, Chotomate. You know what? Everyone, yo, production intern, can you convert Jakey's name? I'm, I'm assuming his name is just Jake. And I know Aladdin, Thai name, Termulo. So it looks like Snow is not going to be playing with us today, and it's going to be Jakey instead. And it's a pretty good first round. They're going to be going for a, almost a full save. We're going to have two deagles and some utility with a defuse kit and armor on the side of Jakey. But you're seeing guns on guns. An AK actually on round two, and a Galil as well on the side of GCU. Window control has been maintained by GCU with that smoke. And it looks like they're actually going to be going for a B execute. Going all the way in. Termino getting two, one kill. Could he get two? 
Looks like he's out of ammo. He's going for the reload, but it's already a 2v4 situation. And unfortunately, gets knocked out by the Bison. And it looks like there's going to be a full buy round on the side of Yoji. They did get one kill, which is a pretty good, pretty good for an eco, right? I mean, you kind of want you kind of want to get as many kills as you can. You're not expecting to win the round, but you're expecting to get kills to ruin their economy. But you know, it's if you're on attacking side, you can just buy an AK armor and you don't have to buy util, right? So it's it's not as hard, but it is very difficult to try to get onto side. But it looks like GC is making it much easier. And actually, I think they're going to go for another save round where. Actually, hmm, interesting. Half of UOG is not buying, uh, uh, Q's buying an MP7. Interesting choice. Usually you want to buy an MP9 if you're trying to go for those SMG kills. And he is watching. Oh, he does have, he gets some action in ramp and Tetris and gets one kill. And it gets two. Actually, Tynan getting the second kill with that grenade. And it looks like Vietnam getting the flash for Time Machine to get a double kill onto A site. And it's a 3v3. Can he get a kill? Yes, he does. Tynan taking down Vietnam. And it looks like it's going to be pretty easy pickings for UOG here. The bomb isn't down just yet. And it's actually stuck in Palace. But Tynan getting knocked out by that grenade by, by Vietnam. And Aladine Termulo, last one's left. I don't think they know the information that the bomb is not down. Or the bomb is down, rather. And uh, GCU having to get it. Because it dropped down, actually. If you notice, <coughs> the palace entrance has a drop down. And most likely, the bomb is there. But I don't know if Tritons, the Tritons know that. So you're seeing uh, GCU making their, making their way all the way from T-Spawn. Actually making their way to B. Really interesting, because they don't have the bomb. Yeah, they looks like they're going, if you can see the mini-map on the top left, they're going into the underside, and they're actually going to be catching Termilo off guard here if he does not, if he's not prepared. And here comes the peak! Ooh, it's coming soon. Oh no, are they jumping into window? There's one peak! And Termilo getting the first kill, and they're... Aladine has to get that information into window for his teammate Termilo, and he can already hear the steps. Oh, and Termilo clutching it out! Finally putting their, putting a score on the board. Ooh, and he gets a nice AK for his trouble. That's like a $20 AK right there. It's all good production. No, you can't actually change the names. I'm just wondering who Jakey is. Uh, but I'm assuming Jakey is a fill-in for Snow, who is not currently playing in the team. But it don't matter. It's good. 1-2 for the Tritons, making their way into a site is Termilo, and he's actually going to be joined with another CT, and watching the map, you can already see that there's going to be pressure into b site. Apps is already being taken, and actually, the T's are going under. I wonder if Tynam heard any sort of information in regards to that, because that is kind of scary that they're taking full mid control. They actually have whole mid control. So... The, the bad thing about Mirage, or the, the thing about Mirage, right, is that you want to keep maintain that control into mid because there's so many avenues of attack. You have a connector, and it, you have Ty name. Just never mind. Ty name just taking names on mid site, taking two down in not a spy and status snipes, and the mid control is still present a little bit from the T side or from the attacking side, but they're having a lot of fun there. They could go either in connector, they can go to short, they can go to under, but it looks like, ooh, and there's Jakey taking down Vietnam and now GCU having to deal with the bomb on the other side of connector while all of T side is, I like the patience though, right? Jakey has a patience of not over peaking and over extending, but they don't have the information whether or not the bomb is down just yet. And you're seeing GCU finally pick up the bomb, making their way into most likely apps, but that's where I believe uh, Termulo is going to be waiting for him. And you're already seeing on the mini map, the bomb carrier is moving his way into apps or rather into, into apps. And Termulo is going to be waiting and going to hear these footsteps from short. And here it comes. You're already seeing it. You can hear it. Termilo could get this peek in. Yep, there it is. Oh, but he gets taken down by Tortles. And there is the trade by Q. And the bomb is down. In now the only one left is Time Machine with this shorty. You're seeing this. I call this the Whirly. This is the Whirly, right? You pick up. You just get a double. You just get the, the, the sawed off shotgun. You ask people to help you to get to near window. And you just stay there and just blast somebody. That's literally what he was going to try to do. But the rest of his team did die out and unfortunately could not make it. And there is the two and up.
And Sleepy is, in fact, Yoji Jakey. So we're going to call him Sleepy now. You know, it's a learning experience for the caster suit. I don't know any single name. Uh, shout out so early. Um, but again, really interesting to see actually a very, a much more competitive fight in the, t in the Tritons. Termilo giving that apps control huge, huge damage from Termilo. And he gets a, And Q actually getting a kill. Q's job is done. Actually, Termilo's job is done too. Headshot damage. And Termi Tynem getting another kill. Actually, this is Tynem. I'm sorry, not Termilo. Tynem getting another kill, doing a lot of damage in short. And GCU can't really do much about Tynem right now with all the pressure that's happening. Two people coming out, uh, two CTs coming out of of market but no no everyone's falling apart and termulo the last one left that was so unfortunate university of guam tritons needed to push out of that that angle in bench to try to get the trade there but they were just getting one by one fragged out by either van or bench and i felt like if you're gonna die you might as well go in and get a trade right they just were kind of too afraid of the angles that were being picked and status snipes picking up that op on attack which is really interesting so that mid control is going to be a little bit different uh whoever is going to be dealing with window there but tiny cannot buy and it looks like no one else is going to buy for him so he's just going to stick with that deagle brand deagle making his way into b Probably pick up a gun if he can get a kill. Oh, he's lagging. <laughs> he's Omega lagging. Oh, he's lagging. Is he lagging? I think I don't think he's lagging. But anyway, Termilo, no skin M4, new account. And A site is looking like the spot to be in with two in Palace from the attacking side and three in ramp with the bomb carrier in tow. Looks like they're gonna be setting up. Judging by the 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 look of the map, it looks like they're gonna be having do they have smoke lineups? I don't think so. Yep, they have smoke lineups, so it looks like there's going to be a full execute onto A site, quick into it, and you're seeing all of the T's st stacking into... S oh, the lineup! Oh, the lineup, and he gets two! Q! Huge, but damn, there it goes three, and it went from a great situation to a terrible one. 3v2, tiny name having to be stuck in short against an op and two AKs, has to make his way into A site somehow to try to pick up a gun, and the other... And Termulo having to make his way, actually... Tiny name. Huge kill, actually. Bomb going down, throwing something into firebox, but no, he gets shot for his troubles. And tiny name, the last one left. Ooh, and there's the op from Palace. Unfortunate 2-4 in favor of Grand Canyon University's whites. And it looks like this is going to be a save round here. And uh, Q, as well as Sleepy, kind of poor right now. And it looks like they are going to be going for a Deagle save here. Deagle with armor. So generally speaking, you want to keep a t keep around 1,300 to 7, what your util is, uh, for, for the next round. Aladdin might thing for the next round. He might have to buy a something to, uh, to try to buy with his team. But the rest of the team on the Tritons of economy so unlike valorant it doesn't tell you how much you can at least earn in the next round so you have to maintain your your um just because you know so aladine might not be able to buy anything next round but you know he could buy scout armor with 2600 so he can he can he can definitely buy something And looks like there's or oh oh Termulo oh Q damn damn three v two oh my god they took it down all three in B side bomb carrier is down in front of Van and the last ones left are not a spy and status snipes actually having a good position here no guns on the side of GOG just yet and apps control is is still maintained by the attacking side oh and there's the kill on short. Aladdin getting taken down, but they do know there's presence and they keep peeking. They don't need to peek considering that the bomb is there. They have to make, like, T's have to make their way into a really bad spot in order to get that bomb. But they keep peeking to try to see where, where the T's are. But you, you know where the bomb is, right? You don't necessarily need to make those peeks. And unfortunately, that huge, huge uh, impact kill situation with, Ty with Termulo and Q just did not pan out for the Tritons. Like they could have, they could have just kept those peaks, 
uh, kept those angles and just wait for the bomb because you know they can't do anything, right? The T's can't do anything. They're stuck in apps. You know, you have information that someone's in 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 short because um, Aladdin died, and you know Termilo knows that someone is in apps, right? So you know where they're gonna be. So you just need to stay near the bomb and just camp the angle because they need to plant it, or it's a timeout and your win. It's your win, right? So you have to make them take the risks versus you taking those risks. But unfortunately, we're going to go into the next round in a 2-5 situation with FAMASs and M4s. And there's Q taking down another one in B site. It looks like the it looks like GCU really favors B. Q doing his job, but no tiny running out of ammo. That is so unfortunate. And these huge impact kills from Q don't get don't get converted but there's termilo taking down status snipes and that is actually an op in out of play right now and that could be huge for the tritons if they choose to use it but you need that double prong approach and termilo's making his way into b short and he needs to get there faster his teammates need him for those angles and there goes the flash and he's going to be able to see no one in brent bench but there's the kill on tortles tortles doing huge work and no and he gets the 3k and GCU taking it over the Triton 6-2 right now. With that bomb plant, they are sitting pretty. Look at how much money they have. That's insane. And the Tritons have to save again. And I feel like this short presence, if you're seeing the 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 pattern of, of GCU, is they kind of just they kind of just waterfall into B, right? Like they have someone in under to maintain some sort of mid presence, but usually you see three people and 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 q has been just constantly punishing them every single time right but it just doesn't sustain the cts long enough for them to take advantage of those impact kills especially in the beginning they had the bomb down again and it looks like it, there's going to be a full pronged a approach with termilo as the anchor on a he gets some can he, oh i thought he was going to get a kill there takes uh, some damage from not a spy and there is the a full a site in control for gcu and it, you know this is looking like a tough eco right they're not getting any sort of kills here they're not getting any sort of damage to to have the cts have to rebuy armor like a tie name is the last one and he gets taken down by tortles and it's looking like it's it's looking pretty rough right two seven is getting into the kind of rough territory once you get to about six or seven uh ahead it's on the attacking side especially especially if you're ct right i mean T is uh, attacking side is arguably much harder just because you have to worry about, you know, people holding angles because that's really what the defending side has to do, right? Hold angles, prevent a push. Um, they don't necessarily have to execute anything unless they have to do a retake, right? So unless the bomb is down, you're not really having to play this sort of um, uh, pragmatic approach where you have to just you have to be the one to attack, right? Obviously, you're the attacker. You're the defenders. You don't have to attack. So it's much easier in that sort of aspect where you don't have to have too much teamwork. You just have to have frags, right? Uh, but on the attacking side, they're going to have a much harder time, right? They're going to have to worry about, do they have the lineups? Do they have the execution? Do they have the retake defense? Now, Aladdin taking down Tortles is kind of huge here. And uh, Sleepy taking down Not a Spy. And it looks this is looking like a good retake right now. This is looking very winnable. And I don't want to jinx it or anything, but there is some palace presence still. And they have to worry about palace, but where's the defuse? There it is. No. Okay, thank God. I was like, a lot of people are looking at the floor right now. <laughs> like, why is nobody looking? Like one or two people are looking at palace. That's kind of scary. <laughs> But good job for UOG finally taking a round after uh, after about a four win loss streak, and now they can finally kind of you know bolster their economy back. Termilo buying that op, I realize why ops aren't good on our on on UOG right now is because if you look at our ping, it's not exactly the best. So uh, it's kind of tough to try to hold an angle. Um, and that's kind of like why it's very difficult to play uh, as a defending side with high ping too, is because you know like. Um, what is that called? Uh, Peeker's advantage is kind of an issue, but you know, at the same time, you do have a good gun in 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 the way of jiggle peeking too. But status snipes taking down Ty name in B and Q having to kind of like worry about it, worry about apps by himself as well as short. But it looks like he's getting some backup on the B from market side. He's gonna be trying to make a play here to try to see. Oh, huge kill! He has to get. He has to run. 
Huge kill from short. Gets a lot of information. I'm pretty sure he heard at least two people in mid. And Termilo actually getting another kill in Vietnam. Having to kind of back away to worry about window. And the presence, this is kind of an issue that happened last time with, with GCU, right? They get the mid presence, but as soon as they get too deep, they kind of stop, right? And I don't know if that's their kind of their strategy or play to just kind of wait it out and see what, what Tritons are going to do. But at the end, it's not really uh, a sound strategy because for one, they're stuck in mid with no bomb now. But it looks like they're just fragging out and... Oh, information gathered from Sleepy. Bad nade. But can he get the trade? He does! Huge 4-7 Tritons slowly making their way to try to even this up. And Sleepy gets that op for Termulo. Or for Jakey himself. It looks like he's not dropping it. It looks like he wants to go mid. Yeah, he's like, nah, this is my op now. This is my op now, man. Sorry, dude. Uh, you died. <laughs> so, it looks like Jakey's going to be actually playing op on A. And Termulo... Um, I think Termilo has always been playing kind of like this mid B presence, but I think uh, Tiny am actually switching it up, and I like them switching it up, right? Switching up their defense kind of like mixes up their skill set, their skill, um, their skill. They're spreading their skill out, right? In that Tiny and Ch and Q are doing such a good job in B, or maybe we can move Tiny over to A and try to get this push. But you can hear, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Q can hear all of that, right? He can hear all of that. That app's presence and Termilo by himself. If he, if someone had a Molly right now, it would be great. But I don't think he's gonna, he's gonna get it. Oh, there's a huge Molly, huge Molly, cutting off a lot of presence, but no, not enough damage there. And there's Q taking down two, huge from that short presence. And Aladdin having to fend for himself in market, knowing that one T is on that side. But there's Time Machine taking him down, unfortunate. And market presence has been gathered. But there is the trade through the smoke. Thai name taking down Thai machine. And there's only one left in Vietnam. Vietnam, presence known. Un Actually, I don't think they... Okay, they definitely know he's in apps. But, oh no, Q is the only one who had a kit. And Thai name... Wow! Vietnam clutching that out. Unfortunate. I don't think they had utility there, did they? Like, I don't think they had the utility to try to smoke him out. Because they smoked the, the entrance of apps, right? right? Which kind of makes sense. But you you would prefer to want to smoke at least the window. Because if Ty Name is holding the entrance of apps, you don't need to smoke his his line of sight, right? You smoke either the window, uh, the window jump, or the cage window, right? That way he can't peek out where the bomb is. But, you know, it's unfortunate... And hopefully they can adjust here. But it looks like they are going to be buying this op in Jakey. Holding down from Ticket Booth. But it looks like this is going to be another split again. Huge kill from Jakey. And he could get another one. There's actually two. There is window right now. I just realized that. Huge kill again from Jakey. Still getting flash and gets that kill anyway on status snipes. And it looks like this is kind of like a half eco buy for... Of uh, GCU, right? So it's not necessarily a huge, uh, huge loss for them. I mean, if they're trying to get some kills here, uh, that'd be great, especially with that Mac 10. But it looks like Termulo taking down Vietnam, and that window presence is known by by Tiny. Oh, yeah, there's window presence definitely. And I feel like they could definitely they could take a risk here, right? I mean, no, nah, not really. There's an op. They only have an op and two SMGs. I wouldn't want to take a risk and try to have to make, um, make Ale or uh, Jakey or Sleepy have to do all the work, right? So you're seeing this mid presence still on the side of Time Machine, actually faking his his approach. He's going back into window and Aladdin getting that information again, and you're seeing him go into short. This is Termilo's time, right? This is literally. He's in the range where the MP9 will do a much better job. Oh my god, he's playing. Oh, let's go, Termilo! <laughs> like, the thing about CSGO is, like, uh, the the footsteps are much, much more subdued. Like, you can't, you can't hear footsteps as far as, like, Valorant's iron boots, right? So... If you start like running, you can actually run very, very far until footsteps are uh, being made. So as soon as he heard like as close as default on the side of B from from Time Machine, he was like, "Oh, this guy's mad close." <laughs> like, 
and I'm seeing a default push here from the side of GCU. You're seeing one in you're seeing mid presence, apps presence, three on three in ramp. I would like to see a, a palace push for the, from them too, but it looks like they're going to go all in on ramp here with that smoke, and they're going to be waiting for that smoke to subside. And once they it does, they're going in. Like they already made their way into into sandwich or to Tetris, and Termilo having to deal with it by himself. Oh, status snipes with that deagle. That was huge. That was actually a huge kill from status snipes taking down uh, Sleepy, but. Let's see if this 3v2 with two rifles. No one saw that. But anyway, let's see if this two, <laughs> those two um, two rifles and an SMG can do anything. But no, Status Snipes actually taking J Sleepy's op. And the last one left is Aladdin. No, he's like, ah, this, this AK recoil. <laughs> it's not like a Vandal. Yeah, unfortunate. Vietnam taking down Aladdin and it's 5-9. It's still pretty, it's still pretty good. And it's last round of the first half, so we have to all in buy. Well, all in buy whatever they can. You know, they don't have too much money. Uh Ty name going for that Deagle. Terminal doesn't have anything. Q literally has zero dollars. And it looks like he did get a buy there. And Aladdin and Ty name gonna be having to play with pistols only. Uh, unfortunate that he has to use a USP. I think you need like three headshots with uh, with helmet for a USP kill. So that's gonna be kind of tough. And like, a, and like a buttload of body shots to actually get uh, get a kill with the USP. And status snipes taking out Aladdin. Unfortunate that mid that mid presence is all in control of GCU. And you're seeing this huge rush, but Q taking down th at least two. And it's a 2v3 situation with an op and an SMG in tow. But they're already going to get that bomb down. And it looks like they're going for a safe... Oh, no. They're going for default plant. And already market control is in GCU's favor. I feel like there needs to be a double peek here. No. That is unfortunate. But Termilo taking down the trade. Can he get another kill? This is an op. Oh. Status snipes taking him down. And... End of the first half, 5-10. Still, rel this is honestly the best that they've ever did. The best that they've ever done in terms of uh, Nace. So 5-10 is really good in terms of, like, score. So hopefully the OG Tritons have better execution and lineups for when it comes to getting onto site. And you're already seeing some 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 utility from Aladdin. Uh, a molly most likely for ticket box and a smoke that will most likely be for CT or jungle. On the A side, or yeah, it looks like they're going A. So they actually do have a God Flash in Q, and yeah, there's the God. Whoa, a little too early for the God Flash if no one's there. So what what I mean by God Flash is me it means that literally any angle that people are looking at on A site will get flashed. So that is a great flash to use, especially if you're trying to execute onto A site because jungle will get flashed. Um, pa uh, under pallets will get flashed. Uh, connector will get flashed. CT will get flash flashed. Huge kills. Actually, only one HP on on the side of Vietnam. And there it is. Pistol round. Let's go. Not exactly as impactful as it would be in Valorant, but that is a huge win. Six ten pistol round. You're actually seeing some good execute on the side of the Tritons, right? Uh, they tried to smoke steers, but it didn't work out in their favor. It was kind of a bad lineup. But having their Having actually, they did smoke jungle instead, which was really good. Smoking jungle means that they cut off all of connector and jungle presence to try to peek into a site. So you only have to worry about two angles: under, under, under palace and CT. And it looks like he's going for a flash again. Uh, Ty name not exact, not exactly. <laughs> All right, Turtles uh, Turtles is sick, man. <laughs> Ticking down Q there, getting a free gun probably if he wants to pick it up. Termulo holding his own, or holding the angle, and it looks like he's going to be, go be going for a market flat, uh, market smoke here with that lineup. And Jakey going to be the entry fragger here with that AK. Kind of scary, right? If Jakey goes down, they could pick up that gun and make this a winnable situation. And this could definitely be a winnable situation because Jakey just got knocked out. And... Oh, Turtles is in such a cl close angle on apps, right? They need to actually worry about the gun. They need to worry about the gun, right? They're not... Oh, my God. They're giving Turtles a free gun. I'm surprised they're not camping that gun. 
They could have, like, what they could... Ugh, that's unfortunate. Now, there's three Galils. Turtles has an AK, a free AK, essentially. And now it's a 3v4 situation with a rifle in play on the CT side. I'm genuinely surprised that they did not try to chill there and wait for Turtles to try to make a play to try and get the kill, right? And if they get the kill, they know Apps is free because no one is there to kill Turtles. Interesting play, though. He does get the free gun. And here in in palace but termulo getting rocked by that usp status snipes and damn status snipes getting a double kill there aladine and tiny going down to status snipes and it's a 6 11 game one and mirage i'm not too sure if this is a first to three or best of three pretty sure it is yeah it is a it's the best of three and i'm not too sure what the next map pick is but i can guarantee you it's not going to be ancient <laughs> like I'm genuinely surprised there hasn't been a technical timeout or like a timeout yet, you know, to try to gather their thoughts. Because I feel like you definitely need those more in, in games like this. Just because there's so much like mental stack that's around. You kind of want to like take a breather and just kind of worry about like, hey, you know, what did we do wrong here? Why didn't we, why did, how did he get an AK, right? <laughs> you know? So, Really interesting uh, play here by the Tritons right now, trying to get some presence into mid, but Q getting knocked out by that AK uh, from the last round. And Termulo slowly making his way into apps. He has to worry about only one CT in default. And now he's making his play here. Oh, that is a really cheeky angle from from Not a Spy, completely blocking off his headshot. Uh, from like it's it's like the opposite of a head glitch. You can only see his legs. <laughs> like that's actually pretty sick. And it looks like CTs are uh, the attacking side on UOG Tritons is going to make their way to mid. But you're seeing all like three of GCU just waiting for him like a firing squad. And Jakey making the first peek. And there's that firing squad I was talking about. Tiny name actually helping out there. <laughs> killing UOG Jakey. Nice assist there, Ty. Appreciate it. That's cool. And there's Turtles. See, like I told you, man, that AK, that AK was an impact like impact kill for for turtles right he got a kill on apps they left the ak let him take it and he's had it for three rounds i don't want to say that that's like a, the winning factor of these current rounds but that is a huge loss on the side of uog tritons to try to make a play right they had three galils and they're like oh yeah we have galils it's fine right and they just leave interesting Q already making his way into actually I don't know where he got tagged there but he got tagged hard and Jakey actually taking Vietnam down and there's the trade at least one trade Jakey's still alive here in mid oh the nade from downtown rest in peace but Termilo having that under presence he could probably get a cheeky kill here from someone who just jumped out he didn't hear that he didn't hear that. Oh, oh, the timing. And like, man, you know, I don't want to go back to that AK, but that AK is doing work on the side of Turtles, right? And the longer that that gun is in play, the longer how that the longer I the, the harder I feel bad or the more I feel bad about how they did not fight for it, right? Oh, great kill from Tyname. Pre-aiming that spot there on the right of of app's entrance this is actually very winnable he needs to watch out for that market presence and there it is oh huge kill huge kill from aladine no but there's the trade and status snipes taking him down oh man status snipes with that great galil and he gets a free gun out of it Tortles finally ending finally his reign is over from that ak from round two that was four rounds. That was four rounds of AK. So, now everyone on the Triton side has a full buy. And on the actually on the side, it's really interesting. Oh, time He's getting, he's, he's memeing hard, dude. He has an MP7. He's probably going to go into, into mid with that. Try to go to under and just get a cheeky kill.
and you sort of like an A presence here. You have palace pressure and ramp pressure on the side of the T on the side of the attacking side. They have to wait for that smoke there in palace. Ty name just kind of chilling. And he's telling his teammates to actually move off, right? There's a lot of presence on A side from, from the CTs because they're kind of like predicting where the where the attacking side is gonna be. And ooh. Kind of a laggy uh flash there. And Ty name still getting some information here. Oh. Good smoke. Using a lot of utility on the A side. Giving B. Oh no, they went through mid. Oh, that's so unfortunate. A lot of information is gathered. You're already seeing the split on the side of CTs, on the side of GCU. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Q dying there in mid gave all the information out for the rest of the GCU to make their plays, right? You saw Turtles trying to make a play here, pushing out of B. That's a lot of information gathered, right, chat? Is that Turtles pushing out of A or pushing out of B apps gives GCU all the information. They're not at B. They might be short. But we had short presence, so they're not at short. So they have to be in CT or on, on in their spawn, right? Uh, you're seeing Chotoma or Q die in mid. So that means, oh, they must be rotating because they're currently at A. So <laughs> there's a lot of information gathered from just a little bit of those like uh, like interactions in the game, right? Termulo taking down Vietnam as well. And this is actually very, it was winnable. Aladine. Oh, there was no time left. It wasn't absolutely not winnable. <laughs> so it looking like 14-6. Hopefully the Tritons can make it back a little bit, you know. 16-14, right? You never know. You never know. But more importantly, right, is the, the like if you're really thinking about like, okay, what is what are their strengths on GCU side, right? They're obviously really great duelists. I mean, you know, ping, ping notwithstanding. They're doing their job in terms of dueling. What can we do to prevent this? Like, someone, there's always an operator on defense side, right? So what can we do in, uh, where the op will be? Flash it, and then you can make your play, right? Or what can you do uh, against an overly aggressive uh, uh, defense, right? Because they tend to push out, right? They tend to push out quite a bit. Maybe you should have someone wait. Maybe you should have the Lurk. Because there hasn't been a Lurk on this UOG team this whole time. They always either go through A or B or mid. Or mid B, mid A. They don't ever have someone just kind of singularly playing a Lurk role to try to like maybe kill someone who's going to be pushing out of B site. Or pushing out of A site when you're trying to push another one, right? So unfortunately, 615, right? So thinking about that for the next round is huge. That's what you kind of want to do when it comes down to uh kind of like a blowout this is essentially a blowout so you want to think about the next the next game and what you can do maybe have tie name lurk or aladine lurk right or maybe have or fakes right you can fake because you have yet to fake so maybe throw some util have two people throw util and then maybe push into another site right there's a lot of different aspects of the team that need to be made uh like decisions that need to be made from this team when it comes down to the overall like uh uh way to counter gcu oh good smoke on the on the window there and chonomate trying to make that mid presence known and like i said right they could actually have someone on a site right now kind of lurking in either palace or on ramp to try to get someone who might be pushing out and you're already seeing a huge huge push from ct side all the way into apps really close angle and this is kind of huge right is that oh there's presence known there's someone in apps oh they don't know he's there they don't know he's there they don't know he's there oh and he gets a 3k they didn't know he was there, man. They didn't know he was there, man. I came from the future, man. <laughs> oh, you're... Oh, it's like a 30 second. 30 yeah, it's, like a, it's a water out delay, so... Uh, okay, yeah, they didn't know he was there. I was wondering why you were here, so we're like, I was like, oh, he's here early. <laughs> so, what do you think the UOG Tridents need to do to, like, improve? Because I can already tell they need a lurk. They need to... They need to have better split or fake potential because they haven't been doing any sort of like they've been doing kind of like regular uh like i would say not really regular plays which is like oh a palace or a ramp right they never like make presence known in others they don't they never play default actually yeah they 
Honestly, they just need positioning, like on CT, because that's, you know, majority of the game was CT. It was just all down to positioning, I feel like. Because they were getting kills. Like, I was like, oh, you guys are, you guys are getting opening picks, like, every time. But it was yeah, just, I mean, like, they weren't in a position where they couldn't get, uh, like, fall back to safety, you know? It's more like a one and done, and then they get traded yeah. out. Because Q, Q and, and Ty were always getting like two to three kills in B, but then they would still lose the round anyway. Just because like once the T side went down, they had to actually play an attacking uh, an attacking position now because they had to get the defuse, right? And that's kind of like the problem too, is that there's no, there's no like, uh, I would say uh, teamwork when it comes to where you want to go. Those are actually huge instance um where there was it was a 4v2 and three people died in a what like isolated 1v1 on bench and i'm like yeah why why didn't people just throw their bodies there and get the trade it was like you know there's like that's just teamwork things that they have to develop right because you know you don't want to die so it's understandable you don't want to die and you know let your team down but if all of you die one at a time then you obviously are gonna lose so you know that's just a teamwork thing and it's also like they're still learning the game, you know, because like they called bench, and, you know, there's two benches in Mirage, so they're like, yeah, one's looking mid, bench. but we're literally, no, there's even a mid bench. There's three benches. Oh bench. yeah, there's three benches. Yeah. <laughs> so, one, one guy was looking at mid bench when we're calling a B bench, and he's like, oh, okay, I could see where you get confused there. Yeah, but yeah. I'll see. They had some good rounds in there, like they did. Termulo was doing great in connector. You're seeing like a lot of mistakes on GCU side. Where they kind of like get mid presence, but they don't know what to do with it. They don't go through short. They don't go through connector. They don't go through under. They just kind of stay in mid to try all go through window. And Termulo is picking them off one by one uh, from connector. So you know, like duels can happen. It's just you know, it's it's tough for them to have to uh, deal with the ping too, especially when they're trying to, you know, only use four rounds of their M4 to try to uh get you know a couple kills but they're using they're using like a bunch of ammunition because it's lagging you know yeah the ping definitely affects like the individual 1v1s a lot like you know when you need to get that crucial pick here and you swing out it's like that's where the ping really does it matter. does it really does matter it's it's really important to like have to not you know like we were playing cod last night right it's like the difference between using eight rounds to three rounds is huge when it comes to trying to get a pick especially with like the m4 the, the a1s because you don't have enough like you don't have enough ammo but you know are we going into the next round or yeah let me drop the ip for production real quick in the meantime i'd like to thank our TA Teleguam, Glide Path, Guam Army National Guard, and of course Laddie Esports. Again, it's your boy Shield Gaming. Commentating with me is Darren Joe, aka Coach Worley. This group uh play or open play. You know what? Let me just restart that real quick. You know, sometimes commentators make mistakes. This is the Nace Star League Week 3 of Counter-Strike Counter -Strike Global Offensive, and this is the University of Guam Trident Esports versus Grand the Canyon Grand University. Canyon University whites oh god we're playing inferno bro <laughs> yeah we started ct though man so like i told uh, the chat earlier is that ct or defender side is just overall a much easier experience when it comes to like the 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 game in general just because you're not having to play a pragmatic approach where you have to execute you have to make the you have to make the play you have to do all of this stuff you have to right. be the aggressor you just have to wait you just have to wait for them yeah, to do you're something just reacting basically to whatever's yeah. thrown at you and then you already know the common choke points that they're going to come through so it's like yeah how how good is your positioning how good is your decision making after you you get a pick or whatever yeah and versus like t side where they have to make like they have to make a play they have to use they have to make the utility push they have to use the utility correctly they're the ones who have to do the smoke lineups you know all that crap yep so and then they have to clear each angle that the many possibilities that the ct can be in yes and especially in inferno like you, if you guys don't know banana control is a huge cornerstone of 
um, of Inferno. Banana is where currently Aladdin is. So there's top banana, which he's a curly right now, and then lower banana, which is where the, the attacking side would be. So having the control of that, because B only has one avenue of attack, which is banana, which is you know a very uh, unique thing in CS and in Valorant, uh, to have only one avenue of control into B into a site. Having that control is huge because if you even if you don't want to go to B, you need that control so that this so that the CTs can't push out of mid and then try to flank you, right? Because of that, because it only has one avenue, it's hard to flank in Inferno because you only have that one avenue. So banana control is very important for both sides. You want to have CTs maintain upper banana as much as possible. Getting into the car peaks is huge. Uh, T's also want to be an upper banana just because they have the presence there to try to fake into B where the rest of the team might be already in A apps or, you know, so kind of huge. And it looks like we're going to be waiting for the warm up to end. And is, does this game, the, did you guys determine? Uh, Bides that, and, okay. and maps. Everything's predetermined. So this is actually GCU's pick, map pick, but we get to choose the side. The side. So we started uh, CT. CT. And then I believe the third map is Dust Two. Decided. Oh, is it determining. Oh, yeah. Let's let's. I mean, you know. I mean, I love I love UOG, but I don't want to commentate Dust Two. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, you guys have been doing like way better than the last couple games. So that's already a good improvement already. We were saying like this is this feels like a comp game because they they start off with like a rush rush B. I think. It was yeah, like, they did. They waterfalled B with which this is list. like rare. <laughs> Like honestly, rush B is rare in like higher tier competitive play. <laughs> Usually, that's a that's a rank strat. <laughs> I like how Ty just gave up. He's like, you know, just get out of here. <laughs> just end yeah, this. I was telling him, I was like, dude, you could have saved your armor. He's like, oh yeah, <laughs> you forgot. Oh, you <laughs> keep armor in this? That's weird. What? You keep your half armor, and then the next round you could upgrade for like a thousand dollars. I don't wait. What you can keep armor in the knife round? I thought the knife like oh because it's face it right. You still need. To oh, do I thought you were talking about the pistol round. My bad. Oh no no no. no, no the I knife round. The knife round does not matter. Oh, okay okay yeah because it's face it. They're, they use yeah. they use this to determine sides. Uh, yeah. In the knife round usually it. usually will just like F one kill or something or not F one kill. Sorry that's rust. F1, console kill. Yeah console kill yeah. It's rust. <laughs> Okay, you know, non-commentary things, dude. Did you guys still play COD after, after I left? Because I know Zedrix no. and uh, Roro were just playing Rust all night. We did not. All I right. left to sleep early so I could wake up to be here. Oh, yeah, to I, be here. Yeah, shoot. And I think these guys uh, are those guys. They just kept going. Yeah, no, they were playing Rust. We have actually have a base down, so we could probably just, you know, check it out after this. Production, you can just cut this out later. You don't have to... <laughs> Let me actually jump in there and see what, what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I'll be back. So anyway, that was Coach Worley, Darren Joa, great commentator. Had to ask him because I wasn't sure what we we're gonna do after this. <laughs> but anyway, uh looks like the knife knife round is done. And finally we're gonna get into it. And I'm curious as to who's gonna be taking that banana control. It looks like it might be Aladdin and Q because they are closest to B. And judging by the gun choice, that is definitely going to be... No, it looks like he might be going to mid. Interesting. We'll see. Eight seconds left. We're going to see who is going to go where. And depending on where it is, especially with Al uh, with Q's gun, yeah, you would definitely want to go to Banana there. Much more kill potential with that 5.7. And making that fast play into top. No, he's going actually going into, into Orange. Well, we call it orange, even though it's not orange anymore, but it's called orange. And you're seeing a really quick... Oh my god, wait a minute. What? A... These guys are crazy. They just made a full push into A, and Tritons got caught with their pants down. They did not expect that. And there is a huge kit. Damn! Alright, Worley, where you at? You need to freaking explain to me why that happened. Like... You don't really see a mid push just like like that, right? Because you you're supposed to get punished by the presence in mid for doing that, right? If you have two, if you have one p one person in boiler or rather a short and one person 
in 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 arches and with no smokes you should be able to hold contain that push right at least get two to three kills because the pet they have to look one or the other way right so you just shoot the person that isn't looking at you and then you're able to contain that push but they all went through mid like through arches and short and just completely dominated mid gcu didn't doing a great job rushing that but there is that banana control i was talking about losing it allows all of gcu to make a play here smoking off or um cutting off ct here and q the last one left in sight oh huge headshot and there's a double kill aladine taking down vietnam as well and this is a 2v1 bomb is oh aladine aladine has the information right he knows that this guy is in library so all he has to do is wait but he's waiting with a bad gun he could have picked up an M, like a, a p like a mp or sorry mac 10 or something but he's stuck with this with this U, usp oh bro he had a lot of time right if he saw the dudes all the way in library i could go to pick up a gun in near the bomb and just hold right but he chose to use the usp almost almost got the kill now it's a 2-0 full buy on the side of uog tritons and hopefully actually time machine did not buy anything so he's just gonna go straight for those mac 10 with armor and look he has a lot of money 100 he could buy two guns and i like this nade push Getting a little bit of damage on, on Vietnam there. And Tortle's actually getting a bunch there. In that mid-presence. Interesting play. They're doing, they're always going anchor. And I feel like this is more or less because of the, the starting... The starting of... Uh, or the beginning of the round. In round one. Is that they're kind of like anchoring B. And then kind of just... Oh no. They're anchoring B. And then sort of just like whole all in on a right because of that like i said banana control is super important and because vietnam killed somebody in banana the only anchor which was q now they have this full banana control all the way into ct that's how important banana is right even though it's only one even though it's only one uh avenue into b and it's very difficult but once you win it you win the whole map right you win the whole site because the CTs have to go through either either construction, coffins, construction and coffins, or CT, right? By oh, anchoring... Baby. I come from the future, and oh, baby. I come from the future, Barry. All right, all right. Wait, is this good? Is this a good or bad? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Dude, I can't like... tell me that, bro. Like, no, 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 man. Fun. I said fun. Anyway. Action, all I'm going to say is... Uh, Look at Termilo real quick. Uh, that's all I got to say. Yeah, just stick to Termilo. Come on. Where's Termilo? There. Oh, that's Aladdin. Wait, where is Termilo? He's on A site. So swap over to him if you can. So Aladdin taking down Vietnam in that banana control. Like I said, banana control is super important. So they're having two people on B now, but here comes actually the CT, uh, the T's are going all the way A short, and I think Termilo's here. Oh, this is Tiny. Name. Oh, Tiny Name's gonna get bopped here. Tiny Name getting taken down. Termilo, there, there, last one there, on there. A. Oh, one kill. Two kills. Termilo with an op. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, this guy's sick. <laughs> Okay, you know what? Let's just point out this dude is on 150 ping. <laughs> like, that was reaction time. Isn't okay. this sick, bro? I come from the future <laughs> come so we the can get the proper observer. You know, it's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> that, yo, that you know what? Welcome, hi Instagram. Welcome to the University of Guam trying esports. This is your boy Termulo with a huge clutch 3K. Good job. On Thanks the eco you. round, by the on way. On the eco, dude. That was a double dink on two ca two players. Gets the op. Picks it up. Blasts that dude. Oh, no. Hey, wait, what yeah, I, I got to go back to the future real quick, you know? I got to yeah, see. Yeah. You got to see. You... <laughs> Only come this back so when good. there's going to be a hype clip, dude. <laughs>
Anyway, thanks to Whirly getting that future, that <laughs> that Dion Warwick psychic network stuff. But the banana control is in the side of T uh, on the attacking side. They're already going upper banana, and you're seeing Q having to retreat all the way back to coffins to try to get a sneaky pick whenever they do push up. But, you know, this that's kind of like a default play, right? Is that once you get into upper B, you have to worry about, yep, smoking CT, and there's the molly in response. And, oh no, Q getting knocked out. That is actually huge. And LED not pushing his way into... I'm genuinely surprised Aladine is not pushing his way into church to try to make a play there. Nice one by Tiny. Getting some kills. This is a 3v4. Still winnable. Aladine kind of waiting for his teammates, but... Tiny and Termilo not making their way into to B. There it is. Finally, at least one of them is. And Termilo in tow. I think he was waiting for the lurk, right? Which is interesting because I think Q would have at least like relayed the information like they're all here. So it is a 4v oh, 4v2 now. Aldine having to walk into construction here. Nope, he's going all in. Huge kill from Aladine. Can you get another one? No. Wow, scout kill. Ooh, nice damage from, from Tiny. Oh, but there it is. Status Snipe taking him down 1-4. Aladdin could have done a way more damage there, but one of their one of their players did die, having to lose their economy there. But man, look at Time Machine's money. 7,400. And it looks like this is gonna be a save round. Oh no, they're gonna they're going they're forcing it. Tiny gonna have to stick with that Deagle, no armor. It's really unfortunate, right? Is that like Cho uh Q was kind of like stuck in coffins having to just deal with like blind fire. And I was hoping Aladdin would kind of like peak, right? Because that's the whole point. Is like you peak on contact. If you guys both die, it's like whatever, man. But if you protect if you gave enough of uh, like Q and time to escape, he can still make presence in construction or church with an op, right? And you would get a kill or two. Which is huge. Uh, but he was kind of just staying behind the smoke and he couldn't he couldn't really back his teammate up and i feel like those risks are what you kind of need to do to try to like bolster your team morale just be like yo dude i'm gonna peek for i'm gonna i'm gonna help you save your life but termulo taking down that arch presence there and it looks like this is going to be an a execute and time machine taking down tie name with all of a kind of stuck T termulo termulo is where they going to come from the future no reload just yet. I mean, he, they, he, he knows he's there. Termilo, seven rounds left in the ch in, in the mag. Oh, this is huge. If he can get this peak here. No. In situations where you don't know where they're at, I mean, like, you kind of walk, and then once you get to the jiggle peak position, then you can start running so you can that way you can jiggle peak. And unfortunately, he kind of just slow peeked into the crosshairs of GCU and just kind of get fragged out, especially with high ping, you're just gonna just not be able to react. So that's why you jiggle, you wide, wide swing gods, you would do uh, on high ping because you know, like you, you just have to hope that they don't know that you're gonna wide swing. And it's a one five still in GCU's favor. But again, this is the Nace Star League Week 3, brought to you by GTA Teleguam, Glidepath, Guam Army National Guard, and of course, Laddie Esports League. And Tortles getting traded there by Tyname in Jakey, but Aladine getting knocked out again by that man. Time Machine with that Mac. Time Machine has been using very, very eco friendly guns, right? Mac 10. He only picks up guns from the kills he makes. Sometimes he buys an op. I think he usually tries to save for an op. No, I don't. I don't know about that smoke. Smoking, smoking Molly in that situation would be very detrimental to the overall defense of B, right? Because the Molly lasts much shorter than a smoke. Time Machine could get this peak here. Oh, huge, huge risk from Termilo paying off, but that was a fake from GCU. No, and the last ones left are Termilo and Q, and what I told the UOG trends to do. 
the GCU team did instead. And library presence has been made. But there's Termula with that huge kill. Last one left is not a spy. The bomb is going down. And there is the molly. There is the flash. Oh, unfortunate. Not a spy. Clutching it out there against Q and Termulo. That was a great flash. Termulo absolutely whited out. Could not see. I like to think maybe they can change it up, right? Aladdin and, and Q have been going, kind of constantly going into B. Maybe have Termulo. And Termulo would like kind of rotate every now and then depending on the, the need, right? Termulo has always been going A. Usually A arch, A short. And it looks like he's going to be holding apps this time. And there's Q and Aladdin again. Oh, interesting use of, uh, of, of utility there. They kind of wasted a molly and, a, and had to smoke at the same time. Kind of early on the flashes too. I'm pretty sure you can hear the footsteps and then you can kind of react by doing that. And there it is. This could be a huge one for Chotamat. For Q, no one got flashed. Oh, no one got flashed. And all of B is taken with Termulo and Tyname having to try to make this clutch again. And I feel like, like I said, right, is that you need to spread out your overall skill and teamwork. And I feel like Termulo has been really good in terms of kind of like keeping down the defense on A site. Maybe you should put him into B, have a 3B. Oh, that's rough. Ooh, nice kill from Tyname. Could have gotten actually two there. Status Snipe's actually getting collided there. Luckily, he had his armor. And look at this wild, wild buyer on the side of Tritons, right? MP9, MP7, FAMAS, and two M4s. And you're seeing still Time Machine. I feel like Time Machine's the bank, right? He's go. He knows that I'm going to get a kill with this MAC-10. And I'm going to pick up a gun. He's always bought MAC-10s. And it's really unfortunate, right? It's like, you know, you're not supposed to lose against a MAC-10 with a rifle you know, generally speaking. But if Time Machine's buying that, it's kind of like, oh, and Status Snipe's taking down Jakey. And Termulo, Q, and, and Aladdin, last one's left. And there's such, there's such quick, quick and concise play from, from, U, uh, from GCU, right? Is that like, they can't do, like, UOG can't do much in terms of like, trying to like, contain them from pushing. And oh my God. Vietnam taking down Ch uh, Q and last one left. Oh no, the timing. Oh God, what a headshot. Status snipes, the last one left. Bomb is going, going. If he can contain, oh. about to say, if he can contain status snipes to get hit by the bomb, that would be good and good and good enough in itself, right? And it's 1-8 right now. It's looking really rough right now for the side of, of UOG Tritons, right? And you're going to see probably Time Machine buy another MAC-10. He's literally the bank. Status Snipes as well. Their money is off the... Is out of control. So I really want to see a spread. Like a change up change up the team. Like composition of, of the site, right? Termulo making his way into B. I like it. Try to contain this contain this site I, I don't understand why they're only having like li minimal banana control right banana top banana is so important to get some information even if they have ops you they have three ops even if they have three ops you have to consider like oh man see like all they're doing is kind of trying to is just getting like busted up in from coffin because there if there's no banana control all four of those t's all four of those attackers can kind of just like spray down coffin but aladin getting that kill but there's the trade huge kills from q no very very unfortunate but there's the trade and the bomb 2v2 situation bomb is down and termulo on his own where is where's jakey Jakey getting that huge kill, 
Last one left is Time Machine. And that MAC-10 could prove detrimental. Finally getting punished for buying a MAC-10 instead of a real gun there. If he had a real gun, he would have won. For sure. Or at least get one kill. So good job. Yoji putting themselves on the board. Termilo getting that op. You need that. Now that they have an op, they need to fight for banana, right? They need to fight for banana control. To get that car presence, get some all of banana and some of lower mid. So getting that would be huge. They need just need to flash it, molly it, get someone into car and hold that angle. But man, Termilo's going for that coffin again. And it's like you want to, you're waiting for them to just completely overtake sight before you even get to a, po a position, right? Like holding banana from sandbags, huge. Holding banana from, yeah, actually sandbags would be great. Or even the wall, a half wall. Like getting that presence is important when it comes to Inferno, right? Because by the time they make it to be, oh man, look at that. They're already all the way in apps. Like there's no, there's no pragmatic, like there's no aggressive defense and GCU knows it, right? They're just casually strolling into apps. They're casually making their way into, into banana. And what would be all, what would be usually a defensive oriented team in CTs have to play attacking side now because the bomb has been always going down. So it's really tough, right? You want to keep pressure to prevent them. Even if you die, it's a learning experience, right? You're not playing to win the rounds. You're playing to learn. So you have to learn, like, I need apps control. I were three T's in apps because no one was in apps. So maybe get that apps control. And the crazy thing is, right, is it's still close. <laughs> like, Yoji Trines are doing such a good job with retake in that, like, if they... If they were able to, if they were able to get like default control into apps and make it harder to like make it a four v four v three right off the bat or like a four v four right off the bat with the trade, it would make it much easier for them to do a retake if they want to do retake because all of them doing is retakes, like this whole round, this whole game. If they can get more more aggressive in either apps, boiler banana they can get much more map presence because they're kind of cutting themselves off and only staying in sight like yes obviously you will die if you don't get the control i love termula holding this mid this is huge right keeping mid mid presence damn damn that was crazy <laughs> termula with a double headshot obviously this is a save round on the side of um on the side of uh the t the attacking side but Still, wow, it's actually still really competitive. Nice, Aladdin taking on Time Machine. Last one left. Ooh, huge! I'm sorry, Aladdin. I mean, Q. Great kills. And now, actually, the economy on the side of, of GCU is kind of suffering right now. But, you know, it's a 3-9, so they do need to get... Yoji needs to pick up the pace. But I want to see that aggressive push, right? You want to see aggressive defense, because you're giving them the site for free at that point if you're only playing on site because map control is very important just like any other first person shooter map control is huge right arena shooters it's all about map control where the spawns are like just like halo valorant huge for map control especially in maps like ascent right tiny name pushing that mid presence is huge and you're seeing oh, i really wish they were holding apps too because boiler room control is lost like I said, if someone was in apps, that would not have happened. But short control has been made. Termilo with a huge flick there. Good kill on the side of short. He has he needs his teammates here now to try to make some sort of like defensive play. Oh. Oh, huge kill from Termilo. Another headshot. 2v2 situation. 1v2 situation. Termilo, can you clutch it out? Oh no. He whiffs. Oh, he whiffs again. Termilo. Termulo, no! Status snipes, taking down Termulo. The op is in, in play on the side of GCU. Like I said, man, when I mentioned how important, important map control is, they, like, Tortles would not have gotten that kill if someone was in apps, <laughs> right? Keep one in apps, you keep one in short, keep one in arches, 2B, right? Usually that's the default.
And it looks like they're going for 3B here. Oh my god, Jakey just getting knocked in mid. Like Q getting that actually get Q getting a good kill. Oh man, they have two ops, I forgot. Or they have one op. Terminal having to fight his way into arches and unfortunately loses that fight. And Tiny MC, huge presence, but no. I like him staying in apps though. But if he pushed out a little bit more, he could have gotten like, or not necessarily. In this, in this instance, it would have been much more difficult for him to actually get that map presence. But Aladdin, the last one left, having to deal with his 2v1 situation with a FAMAS. Can he pick up another gun? Yes, he does. He gets an M4 for his troubles. And now he has to worry about going all the way from mid. And you're seeing Status Snipes actually making his way into a cheeky spot. He is actually in hate. Where is he? I don't even know where he is in, in, in reference to the map. Oh, he's on top of D. He's on top of default. Huge! He heard two footsteps. I'm pretty sure he heard two footsteps. No, he... No. 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 No, Aladdin. Okay, he gets a kill. It don't matter. I don't, you know what? It's fine. You gotta kill Aladdin. I'll res I respect it. Oh, that's so unfortunate. A couple laughs to be had on the side of the GCU. Not a spy literally just looking at Aladdin as he went straight to the bomb. And again, kind of like a half buy on the side of the CTs, like FAMASs and scouts on going into B. And you're seeing this traditional, th okay, you're seeing a more traditional uh, default from the CTs. But you, you need more presence, you need more, mm, you need more presence. Unfortunately, no trade. Aladdin having to kind of just like die there with no trade from status, uh, from, uh, from Q. Oh, lots of good damage. Good damage, good, great damage on the side of uh, Q there. That could actually help make this winnable, right? Like Vietnam, they are barely alive. Uh, not a spy at headshot kill for an M4 at that rate, at that health. Oh, wait a minute. Someone bought an auto sniper. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's crazy. We're sorry. <laughs> oh, that's so unfortunate. But, you know, it is what it is. 312. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if, if the Tritons can kind of come back here. And depending on whether whether or not round 14 comes and Whirly Guts online, then we'll know. <laughs> but let's try to have let's try to have some good times here. I mean, you know, this is still a learning experience for the, the for the Tritons, right? There's a lot of there, there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made in terms of the teamwork, in terms of the the map presence, and I feel like that's kind of an issue in general. You saw it in Mirage as well. L look at look at GCU, right? GCU's map presence and the importance of banana is so well known that they already are making their way into upper banana because they know car is such a strong position to be in when you're trying to fight the T the attacking side trying to make their way to banana. And you're going to see that for the next couple rounds. You're going to see GCU rush their way into upper banana as fast as they can, throw some nades to prevent a push and hold upper banana. And that's kind of like a default thing to do. That's really, really a standard thing to do. The reason why is obviously you just saw right there, right? If you have car position, it's huge. There's not a lot of hiding spots to, to run away from once you're already in a position to deal with car. And you're seeing already Turtles making his way into Banana. And this is kind of like the downside, right? Is that they're just playing very aggressive. Yeah, you can't do much about that, honestly. You can't do much about that. Like they just, they just kind of pushed through mid, you had like locks. Uh, but now you have a full buy on the side of you uh, of UOG, and you want to see them kind of like make a play here, try to push into banana, try to push into a second apps, and and kind of like either that or just play default and wait for them to make a mistake, right? Like they pushed out of mid really fast, right? Stay in, stay on stairs, stay at mid stairs, right? If they push out, if they push out of banana, you can just wait for them at stairs as well. But it looks like they're going to be playing a very standard sort of 3v2 uh, BA. Very aggressive, though. Oh, no. 
Oh no, Q a little slow on the pick there. But Jakey getting a trade from getting a trade as well. And Vietnam low on health. This could be a good a good round for the Tritons. And this is what I was talking about, right? Getting apps presence means that the CTs have or the T's side has to be much more aware or cognizant of like where the angles might be from the T's or from the from the defender side. Because of that, look at it. Look how slow they're having to push into A versus versus when the Tritons had to deal with Oh god. That's so unfortunate. Versus when the Tritons had to push into into sites or when the Tritons had to defend sites from before. Now this is a 1v2 situation where, where before if you if you if GCU was attacking, it would usually be like a 4v4 a 4v4 4v2 in their favor. Oh, great, great pre-aim from uh, Termulo there. Great crosshair placement. Getting status snipes. Making it competitive now. But, you know, GCU does have full rifles for this round. And you're going to want to see how they're going to react in terms of... Oh my god, they have double ops. That's scary, right? Op and mid, op and banana. So if... They, you know, UOG doesn't know this. UOG doesn't know this. So someone's going to get picked, and I want to see someone flash the op next, uh, next time they peek. Oh, Tynan taking out Tortles, though. There goes one op. Oh, but Vietnam. Great kills on second apps, and there's that second op we were talking about. Tynan, last one left. Oh, God, he's going to get flanked. Ah! Oh, they're having a good time now. <laughs> they're having a good time now. See, this is, you know, this, this, everyone's having a fun old time. Shout outs to GCU for making it interesting. But Vietnam taking down Thai names. He already accepted his fate. It's fine. And it is match point. GCU on the verge of taking this. And it looks like this is already looking like a GG on their side. But we won't know until Whirly comes in, so. I want to, like, there's things to take away from this, right? The main thing, obviously, is map presence. And I feel like they need to, Yoji needs to work on that for sure, right? Defensive, their defending side, they only had four, like, two rounds. And arguably a much easier time to defend than it is to attack, especially in Inferno. So, like, definitely need to work on that. And hopefully they can come back strong next round. Or next game. Obviously, like I said, ping is always a factor. They are literally, like, 100, 100 ping more than the competition. Which is very difficult to deal with when it comes to reacting to, to peaks, right? And they're like, like I said, Time Machine was able to get two kills before someone reacted with Tiny Name getting that headshot. And it looks like. Last one left is Status Snipes. With a push into short. Do they have the angle? Oh, God. He was caught off guard. Tiny Name. Tiny Name. Tiny Name. No. GG. It was a great attempt from the Tritons. Unfortunately, they do get bopped by Grand Canyon University's Whites. Good job to them. Shout out to the Tritons for trying their hardest. You know, it is what it is. It is a 16-4 victory, and I believe it was a 16-6 victory on the first map. So 2-0 in favor of GCU White. Again, congratulations to these guys. This has been week three of the NACE Star League brought to you by the National Association of Collegiate Esports. And again, this stream has been brought to you by GTA Teleguam, the Gu Glide Path, Guam Army National Guard, and of course, Laddie Esports. Again, thank you to production. Thank you to you guys at home for watching this week three of NACE Group Play. Again, this is your boy Shado Gaming commentating with me. It was uh, Darren Ujo, Coach Worley. And again, thank you to you guys. Thank you to our sponsors. And we will see you guys next week for more nace star league group play again take it easy guys we understand an upside down world but they're writing us off before we get to the starting line a 
a stalled generation? Who do you think is gonna fix all this? We will, because our future is the future. The next greatest generation is now. We all start somewhere. We start with the day. We start with him. We start with family. We start with a lesson. And the perfect wave. We start here and here. We start at your office and your home. We start with the connections that matter the most. The ones that move us, change us, inspire us. In an ever-expanding world, personal connections are what tie everything together, what ties us together. We all start somewhere. At GTA, we start with you.